And that's the striking thing, isn't it? Like it or not, if you're Real Madrid, if you're Chelsea, mm. they'd have sacked Solskjaer five or six times. Yet United seem to be keeping, I don't know, <laughs> burying their head in the ground. Well, because <laughs> this is the same club that resigned this manager. Huh? re up this manager. Yep. And, and they said it's almost as if to say, look, we believe in this guy until we don't believe in this guy. But it's, again, a sign of a club that takes a step forward and two steps back. And the plan, the objectives, and how you're able to achieve those objectives don't quite match up. And so, yeah, we say Manchester United should be expected to be doing this, that, and the other. But that has been the story of Manchester United for the last 8, 10 years, where you are expecting something from a club and they don't seem to do it on a consistent basis. And so everybody's losing faith on Solskjaer, the players, uh, the fans. Yeah, and what about the decision makers? Mm -hmm. Because this is really what matters. The decision makers are the ones that have to say, look, this is not sustainable any longer. Regardless of what the players are saying, regardless of what the fans are saying, you, as a decision maker, you look at your current situation as a, as a club and you have to make the decision and understanding. This team is no longer playing for this coach. Regardless of who this coach is, he's got to go. The, the thing for me is it's, it's about culture and about arrogance. Manchester United have us believe that their culture is a stick by their manager for the long term. Strangely, it's a culture developed around Sir Alex Ferguson, the most successful coach in English football. Yet they're still trying to sell us that narrative, that they stand by their coaches, they're there for the long term, and they find themselves now with this coach behind the eight ball. That's about arrogance. An arrogance of a football club, as big as they are, as successful as they are, as profitable as they continue to be, believing that whoever they want, whenever they want, is available to them. They managed to pull it off with Cristiano Ronaldo this summer, which strangely has been the highlight of Manchester United's season so far, nicking a player from City. And they believe that whenever they're ready for a player, whenever they're ready for a manager, all they have to do is go knocking on the door. And that's not the case anymore. Far more clubs, not only in, in, in English football, in world football, can lay a claim to the Zidans and the Ten Hags and the Erling Haaland's and whoever else it is, it is you're after. Manchester United have had this belief around who they are um, that, in my opinion, is misplaced and has got them into the problems that they're in and, now. And to your point about arrogance, this whole idea that, well, Zidane is out there, go get him. Mm. Well, maybe Zidane doesn't want to come. Mm. Maybe he looks at your club and he says, no, why would I want to take care of that mess now? Why would, why would I jump into this sort of situation when I don't have to? Right. Oh, well, because we're Manchester United and that should be enough. Not anymore. Mark, what will it take? What will it take for the board to come together and think, you know what, maybe Solskjaer isn't the man because we've seen them obviously humiliated by Liverpool and Manchester City. We kept feeling that that was going to be the tipping point. What is that tipping point? Well, it's money, Dan, and it always gets down to money with the Glazers. And the, the situation is that, you know, the Glazers are happy every year to finish top four. For them, that is the barometer. If they finish top four, they're in the Champions League, they're earning the money. If or when it becomes clear that they've got a battle on for top four, then that's when Solskjaer might be in trouble. And I think Arsenal's resurgence under Mikel Arteta, Tottenham may get going under Antonio Conte. You've got to say the top three will, will pull away. I think that, you know, Liverpool... Chelsea and Man City will be the top three. West Ham, I, sus I suspect, might drop away. But if Arsenal get some momentum, if Tottenham get going again, then United are going to struggle for top four. And as soon as it becomes evident to the Glazers that they're going to miss out on the top four, the Champions League, the money that brings, that's when Solskjaer's in trouble. But that could be two months away. It really could. And that is the, that is the danger that United let, let it drift. And let's not forget, with David Moyes, with Louis van Gaal, with Jose Mourinho, it was obvious way before that they sacked those coaches that it had gone wrong. They, they, mm. they, they, they dithered and they waited too long to get rid of all three. And the situation with Solskjaer is the same. The wait is too long, too late. They'll, they'll wait till maybe January, February time and the season's gone. Another season wasted. And, you know, Shaq is right, it is arrogance. But it's also a lack of, in, a lack of intelligence in, in terms of football intelligence, a lack of kind of knowledge of what the game is about. You know, why, why is it in Zidane? Because he won three Champions Leagues, great. But what, what are his tactics? What's his game plan? What players is he like? Why is he a good fit for Man United? I don't think any of these questions have any answers at Old Trafford, but he's a big name. He's a big name, keeps United at the top of the commercial tree for all the wrong reasons. They're not, they're not a clever club in terms of recruitment anymore. They're just not.
Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.